It is a bumpy ride from Zamud Lamini. Hello. But he takes this trip as often as he can, by whatever means necessary. That's nice. <laughs> because Mzamo is trying to save his own backyard. I cannot imagine it. You know, you see all these mountains, it, you know, the beauty. So once you dug it open, then all of this is going to be destroyed. The breathtaking scenery of Ponderland in eastern South Africa could change forever. An Australian company, Mineral Resource Commodities, wants to mine the dunes for titanium sands. And Amzamo feels that the area is just too special to become a mining site. I tell what the miners don't tell, the, the impact of it in the community. Mining will transplant people and alter the landscape, and the Pondos are fighting to save their way of life. It is along this coastline that a mining company wishes to dig up 360 million tons of material with global commodity prices rising and resources dwindling, it is here in Africa that the battleground is drawn. Actually, can I have a look? Researchers say that to understand the new scramble for Africa, you need to look to Asia. I mean, the increase uh, in commodity prices is linked to China's uh, industrialization. So the commodity prices are being pushed up through China's demand. And the last five years, this has really taken off. So you're seeing China is entering into a kind of global competition for African and developing world uh, resources. Looks as though it's going to be a new species. It's very Botanists marvel at the area's biodiversity, with new plants being found on a regular basis. They will never, ever be able to replace what's here. The quest for resources is extending to the world's environmental hotspots. Ponderland alone has nearly 200 unique plant species. African governments are generally embracing mining at a, at, you know, throughout Africa as, as a means to promote economic development. And this is also being promoted by the World Bank International Monetary Fund. So we're seeing throughout Africa from Madagascar to Mauritania, Ghana, DRC, mining is very much on the forefront of developing the, the continent. Mining is, is destructive in many ways. I mean, it has the possibility of, of providing sustainable development, but it also has a tremendous environmental legacy. I drove five hours up the coast to witness that legacy. Mining companies weren't so keen on letting me in on the ground, so I took to the air. A local environmental group wanted to show me the impact. Dune mining stretched far up the coastline, with even small-scale mines having a large effect. And where there's a situation where governments are eager to accept mining investment, the long-term planning of the environment and local community development can be an afterthought, or not even a thought at all. Uh, so you see mining being rushed and the consequences being felt years down the line. And once mining arrives, more production follows, rezoning an area from nature to industry. If you mine an area of a coast or a forest, you run the potential of losing that forever. So when we look at the costs and benefits of mining, we've got to take in a much longer time, uh, time frames. And this is one of the problems with the recent mining boom, is there is an intensification of short-term interests in, in, in gaining profits from mining. And this is squeezing the time frames governments uh, take over making decisions on mining. But the mining industry says a seed of development is exactly what Ponderland needs. With 70% unemployment, they contend that mining will bring in infrastructure, jobs and money. Okay. And these titanium sands are certainly lucrative, worth over one and a half billion dollars over the next 22 years. <laughs> but Mzamo and many Pondo say the money will benefit only a few and that the effects will harm many. I was born here. So I would like to see this area looking like this and my children sit like this. Whether the commodity prices will stay stable or not is, is an unknown and it's difficult. There may well be volatility. But one thing remains certain is that demand for mined commodities over the next 40, 50 years is going to remain high. Some experts have predicted that in order to keep pace with, mine, with the demand, uh, the world will have to mine five times as much as ever has been mined before. So I think we're fairly guaranteed to see mining being an increasing activity in Africa as well as other areas of the world. With the global hunt for commodities showing no sign of slowing down, their lives seem destined for change. This is David McKenzie for CNN in Ponderland, South Africa.